high in the Bolivian Andes, some 13,000 feet above sea level, in a land once ruled by the Incas and more than 3,500 miles from their campus. Auburn University engineering students are developing and employing technologies to make life better for a people who are seemingly cut off from the outside world. It's a difficult place um, to work in, um, especially coming from the U.S. It's, it's hard to get here. It's a remote location. The tiny village of Tessimpuco is firmly set in an unforgiving area. Rugged mountains and limited roadways make traveling out of the village impractical for many. And a harsh climate with bone dry winters and unrelenting rains of summer means big challenges for crop production. For centuries, the local Quechua people have survived, but they're very much a developing society by today's standards. For the past three years, Auburn students have worked to raise the Quechua quality of life by engineering sustainable solutions to their challenges, providing a ray of hope for a better future. They really have a need, and um, from an engineering standpoint, it's challenging uh, what we're working with here. You don't have a lot of materials. Their quality of life is really relatively poor compared to what we're living with in the United States. There's so much room for improvement in so many ways we can help. They're so receptive to us and um, they're just so kind and willing to work with us and I think that makes it really easy to come back. Working closely with an on-the-ground nonprofit organization known as Servants in Faith and Technology or CFAT the Auburn team identified two needed work projects months before embarking on their journey to Bolivia. The preparation was critical because of a short one-week work schedule in Kesempuco. I'm on the hydroponics team, and uh, our goal is to uh, provide a means for them to grow food efficiently, more effectively um, than the systems that they have. Right now, their land isn't uh, the best for uh, growing crops. So what we're doing is trying to condense it into a smaller place where they have to use less dirt. Um, they can use more gravel, more things that they can find anywhere and um, grow crops out of that. The only materials that we brought were the tub and the PVC. And they're pretty easy to find. We use their bricks, their mortar, their space, and we talked to them while they were, we were building this. And as we're building it, we're trying to make sure that we could construct it again out of adobe like this or out of wood or sticks or stone, whatever is available to make a similar system. This is a prototype with the optimum condition. Through communication, we kind of figured out the constraints of the space and the materials, and now we got to kind of see what they're going to do with it. It works! It works! What are you going? All right. Local landowners will study the Auburn hydroponics design and decide how and where to build their own systems. The project is based on the needs and the desires of the Quechua people. One requirement is that all projects be sustainable through available materials and that any design can be replicated locally. We definitely need uh, projects that they, they know how to fix, they know how to improve upon, uh, and they can adapt to their surroundings. We talk about appropriate technology and really that just means it, it can't break down, it's got to be useful. In five years, we don't want to come back and it just be a concrete block sitting there uh, dry in the field sallow again. We want it to work and work uh, continuously. On a lot of trips, I've been on like this, or like aid trips or mission trips or things like that, you'll come in and you'll paint a house or build them a western style house or something and that's not what they need. Through communication with them year round, and like living with them while we're here, we get constant input about what they want from us. We don't come in with preconceived notions of what they should have. We wait till they ask for something, and then we do our engineering from that to decide how it can best fit their land. It's that open communication, despite a language barrier, that makes the Auburn efforts successful. Kessenpuko residents welcome the students with open arms and say they appreciate that people from so far away care. Okay. Recently retired Auburn engineering alumna okay. Melissa Hurt accompanied and worked side by side with the students on their projects. She says there are real world lessons to be learned through the Bolivian experience. The students, I think they're really motivated to help these people, to improve their way of life. They, they live a hard life. It's not a bad life, it's just hard. 
and anything you can do to make it easier is important to them. All these kids are so smart. They don't necessarily have a lot of, of worldly experience, and this is a real positive thing for them to get. We've been here two times before. It's our third trip. We do have a commitment to the community. So we are hoping to improve their way of life each time that we do come. The project that I'm working on here is directly behind us. Um, it is the uh, irrigation system, the Bolivian. They're not in the money market system. They live off the land. Everything that they grow, they eat. They don't have any water right now going to the field. Their yield is not very high, yep. and so we build an irrigation system. Despite the dry winter season, water flows from mountain springs year-round, providing nourishment for the crops. But right now, there are no means to capture it and divert it to the fields. The Auburn engineers are working with the locals to clear a site that will hold a storage tank. Using survey equipment and GPS technology, they're calculating flow rates that will deliver the right amount of water needed to grow the crops. But Auburn's presence here is about more than providing water for crops. The work being done will indeed give the Quechua a better life. But just being here, showing compassion, raises their spirits and gives them hope. The Auburn spirit shines brightly half a world away. What I'm actually building and designing, or what my team is building and designing, is helping these people. And these people are so passionate and caring. It's just real fun having fellowship with them, just seeing how they interact and how they interact. I mean, we can only say one or two words to one another. And charades is played a lot here, which is a lot of fun. And we're all units, and we can still commit on the same level, so it's a lot of fun. For three years, the Engineers Without Borders group has been coming here, learning from the people, identifying what their needs are. We're trying to meet basic human needs, but so many times people come in and do it to somebody. And in this case, they come in and they listen. I mean, I've learned just so many things about other like cultures, other ways that people are forced to survive. Yeah. It's just it's an eye-opening. I think you, you know, you, you see a bunch of hard-working, extremely smart people that live here, and they do live in poverty. You know, they struggle to eat every day, and, and um, you know, we, we look at the homes and places that they live and compare that to what we do, and we, you know, kind of see that drastically different uh, in terms of comfort level. Nobody here is lazy. Nobody here is dumb. So I think that that helps, or that maybe changes some people's worldview. I'll have to do it again next year. Once you commit and see these people and see the, uh, you know, what they gain from your contribution. It's hard to walk away from that. It's so rewarding to see, you know, the little kids, they, they're so welcoming. It's not just for them, it's for their children. Hopefully the technologies will show them will remain and hopefully will be easy enough to implement and reuse. I think this is, is you know, a beautiful way to tie all those together, that you've got service learning uh, because what they are working on is for the benefit of someone else, uh, you know, or themselves. This is a study abroad tour, so you know, mesh those two together, and then they're exposed to a, a culture that they've not been used to, and they get a very best as you can an intimate view of that culture. Um, so that is, you know, that certainly embraces our desire at Auburn University for you know holistic uh, education, whether you're an engineer, a zoologist, or an English major. I think that that's really important, and this this types of activity and working here and again working all year round on these type projects I think really um, brings that to fruition.